polygons. Huh? No, no, poly something, huh? polymorphism. That's right, guys. Have you ever heard of that word? Nope, this video is for you. That's one of the key concepts in object-oriented programming, and it's one of the four pillars of OOP as well, polymorphism. And I'm gonna break it all down for you guys through interactive visualizations and live hands-on coding exercises. Sit back guys, grab your cup of coffee as I break down a key concept of OOP polymorphism. Welcome back guys for another episode of Code with Josh. And for the most obvious reasons, I'm Josh, in case you didn't guess, don't know why, but I'm stoked to have you guys here. And that's right, in today's episode, we're gonna break down polymorphism, a concept that, well, to be fair, I've never heard of that word before until I got into programming, all right? And I'm excited to break it down for you guys. Before I do, right, do me a favor, hit the like button, all right? That really does help me reach more students around the world and a larger audience. And subscribe if you're new to this channel, as I have daily shorts and weekly Python content, all dedicated to helping you learn. And guys, on top of that, I don't know if you're like Patrick Starr living under a rock, but if you haven't heard, I just released a free 13-hour Python course for absolute beginners, right? If you're interested in that, I'm gonna try and link it here, okay? But if not, I have it over on my own platform. It's still free, okay? And you get my guide, ebooks, and an interactive community, all right? And that's the link in the description. So head there and check that out afterwards if you want a free Python course. All right, guys, so today is polymorphism. If you're itching your head like Josh, what is that? Okay, don't worry. First thing, I'm gonna break it down for you today, right? But it's one of the four pillars of OOP, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction. Today's polymorphism. In case you missed the four pillars video, it's gonna be here as well. Check that out after the video, all right? All right, enough chit chat, right? Let's dive into what we're all here to learn today, polymorphism. So now that we're diving in here to polymorphism, right, let's really explore what that is. So here you can see I've put together the four pillars. Now, I have videos out on this content, all right? I will link that above if I can as I go through. All right, encapsulation, okay, this is the beginning concept of OOP, okay? The first thing we learn is encapsulation. It's like storing things. Then we have inheritance, right? And really inheritance is when we pass through other functions and information to another class. And today we're gonna be on the third pillar, which is polymorphism. And this is really when objects of different classes can be treated as objects of a common superclass. Okay, so think of creating a function that you can give objects to, polymorphism. All right, let's further your understanding, right? So it allows them to be treated as different types, right? Or as a common type, excuse me. And this really means that objects can be processed differently based on the type of data that it's holding. Okay, so what information does your class have? Now there are a few pros to this, okay? So I'm gonna talk about two here. It really allows for code reusability and flexibility. As programmers, right, we are lazy. You need to think of ways to reuse your code, right? That's where OOP comes into play. Functions, loops, things like that. Okay, so polymorphism helps out with this. The same method name can be used for different types of objects, okay? So I can have a function called apple in three different classes. That doesn't matter, okay? Then our appropriate method is called based on the object's type at the time we create an instance of that object. Let me break it down further for you guys with a code example. So I love colors, okay? You're gonna see in my code, in my courses, in my code, everywhere, colors, all right? Because that's what code looks like in VS Code, all right? It's not gonna be the same color, right? But if you can see what you're working with, everything becomes easier. So you can see I have a super class. That's like my top class. Everything starts as an animal. Okay, so I have an animal and then I have a velociraptor. I don't know, is this Jurassic Park? I wish. Then we have a duck. Are you Donald Duck? No, all right. So I have two different animals, but they're at the end of the day, right? They're both an animal, okay? Now notice, in each class I have a speak method. A method is a function in a class. 
All right, then I have two child classes because these are inheriting our animal class. Now outside, you can see my yellow, okay? That's my polymorphic function. This is the topic of the day. It's a function, not a method. It's unrelated, it's unlinked to any class, okay? It's a function that takes an object and I can call a method based on that. So here you can see it says animal says, it takes an object and then because it's an object, I can link my object to a method, right? I can create three objects then. So on the outside, I create a dinosaur, a duck, and a raccoon. They each have a single argument because we justified that inside in it of our superclass, right? Now this, this really carries in, I could emphasize abstraction, which is the fourth pillar of OOP, but today I'm not gonna do that. Right, but this leads into the last pillar, right? So once you start to learn them, you're gonna notice that you're naturally using them along the way. Okay, then you can see that I'm just printing off here. Okay, so dino, it's gonna go dino, speak, screech. Duck, it's gonna go, you guessed it, duck, speak, quack, right? So polymorphism. Okay, so when do we use this? Well, very quickly. Boom, right here, okay? If you can meet two or three of these, you're golden, okay? Because polymorphism helps with all of the following, right? It helps with encapsulation, that's the first pillar. It helps with simplifying your code, reusing your code, you should be doing that. Code flexibility, as well as abstraction, which is the fourth pillar. So if you can see that you're gonna be needing two or more of these, try and take a polymorphic approach. Here's another poly breakdown that might make a bit more sense, so okay. I have two classes. Even though, yes, they are both shapes, they are not connected in any way. That's it, okay? A shape, that's not in Python, that's just in the world, okay? They're not connected, right? So they're both shapes, I can make two objects. And then I have a function. This is a polymorphic function because it is not connected to either class and it takes, what is this? Shapes. Why is that plural, right? Okay, so pause the video, look at the code. Try and interpret what's gonna happen. What if we put our example in action and I actually try and calculate the total area of two completely different shapes? Okay, that sounds hard if you're bad at math, which is okay, because as programming, the computer does it for us. So here you can see I have my class rectangle, okay? It has area. I have my class circle. It also has area. Outside, I have a function, not a method, not a class. This is a polymorphic function. This is gonna take, if you didn't guess earlier, an iterable, okay? So let's not even think about this now. We're done with that. On the outside, I can create two shapes, rectangle and circle, and then I wanna find the total area of both of those combined. So I can take what I get back and I can put them in a list. That list is our iterable that we can give to our polymorphic function. So total area, I am calling my polymorphic function and I'm giving it a list. It's gonna be whatever rectangle returned and whatever circle returned. So then our list can be used in here because it's a list of objects. When I iterate through, wait, for every shape in my list, each shape is an object, so I can link that object to a method. I can say shape area. This is our polymorphic function. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna take you guys into VS Code and I'm gonna give you guys a fairly quickly, but a long polymorphic example. Let's do it. Guys, real quick, do me a favor. If you're getting value from this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe as that helps me grow as a small channel. All right, back to the video. All right, so in this case you still can't pronounce that word, I put it at the top for you, right? Polymorphism. Polymorphism. I think it's kind of funny. It works. Do you get it? All right, let's code. So what I really want to do here is I'm going to create a super class, which is going to be like an account. And then everyone, usually, not all of us yet, right? Sometimes we don't, right? We usually have three accounts. We usually have a checking account, a savings account, and an investment account. Okay, yeah, they're all our accounts, right? So what's your net worth, right? That's a combination of everything, right? But I wanna keep them individual as well. 
But if I wanna know how much money I have, I wanna group them together real quick. That's gonna be what our polymorphic function does. So I'm gonna come up here and create a class called account with our init. I'll say init needs account number and balance. Let's create a property for those. Now, what can every account do? I can deposit and I can withdraw. Let's create two real methods for our account that then everyone can use. So let's say uh, deposit, how much? Every time we deposit, we can take our balance and we just want to add the amount that we give it. Then we can say withdraw. How much do we want to withdraw? That's our amount. Let's basically check if our amount is less than or equal to our balance, then we can take our balance and we can minus equal the amount. Else, what's the problem? We don't have enough money. Insufficient funds, let's drop that. Good, okay, so our super class is done, all right? Now I'm gonna come down to my checking, okay? That was really quick, all right? Because all I'm doing here is I'm adding, I'm withdrawing, I have three different accounts, okay? The overall logic of the code is gonna be fairly simple today, right? But it's still gonna take a polymorphic approach. That's key that we understand this. So let's make a checking account class. I'll say checking account, it inherits account. Checking account doesn't need in it, all right? So checking account, it, it can get interest. Okay, so I'm gonna say interest calc. But really, I think we all know, how much do you get in your interest rate, right? So in the US, it's like 1%, half a percent, it's nothing, okay? So I'll say interest rate is gonna be equal to like 0 0.01, great. Let's create a variable. I'm gonna use this for all my other classes as well. Interest is equal to our balance times our interest rate. Let's return interest, done. Okay, the only other one that I really want here for each one is I'll say withdraw, right? What's the amount that we wanna withdraw? So we have one in the super class, okay? But each one is gonna have one of its own, okay? Because what if I have a minimum on the account? Like in my checking account, I need to have $100 or in my savings account, I need to have $5, I can address that here. So really withdrawal, I'm actually just gonna copy from the super class, right? Cause they're pretty much, well the first two will use it. So I'll say a self dot balance, let's say in the checking account, I need to have at least $100. So I'm gonna, I'll subtract 100 from that. I'll also say here must have 100. Cool, we're done with that, all right? Uh, moving on to our savings account. So let's create a completely different class but it can still inherit our super class. Inside here, guys, right, all these accounts you're noticing are the same. I'm just gonna copy the methods from the checking account, but think, what's gonna be different between the checking account and the savings account, okay? It can be small details. So I'm just gonna copy interest calc. If it's a savings account, I'm gonna get a little bit more, right? So this time, let's say, okay, I'm gonna get like 8%. That's too good to be true, right? <laughs> Okay, so interest rate, 8%, that stays the same. This time the minimum balance could be like $10. So I must have $10 in the account. Okay, so they're two completely different accounts because we have different thresholds on each account. Great, this brings us to our last one, your investment account. I love these accounts, right? Investments are quite interesting and we treat those differently, okay? Because we wanna be adding to them, but we can withdraw from them too, right? All right, investment account. So let's create a class investment account, we can still inherit our account, no stress there. Um, and this time, I'm really just gonna copy my interest gap, cause I mean, I don't know about you, I said we can withdraw, but I'm not gonna withdraw for a long time unless I really need it. Okay, so I'm gonna drop that here. I'm gonna say interest calc, how much interest are we getting? Let's go all out here and say, you find something really good at 10%. Okay, now, yes, you can withdraw from your investment, but I'm not putting it here because there's no minimum requirement, which means if I try to withdraw from my investment, I'm gonna use the super class. So if I use it, I can just use, oh, not that one, this one, right? Our withdraw from the super class, that can be used instead. That's great, all right. Let's take our polymorphic approach. So now all of our classes are done. Let me clean this up for you. Let's squish our code together so then maybe you can see a bit more. I wanna create a function that is gonna give me my combined total in all my accounts, all right? So based on the example from my interactive slides, how could we do this? I'm gonna create a function called total interest. Total interest is going to take a list of all my accounts that I possess. I'll create a 
counter variable. Now there's other ways to do this. I want this to be readable for you guys. So I'm creating this counter variable with some space. And now I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna say for every account in all my accounts that I give it, I'm gonna take my total and I'm just gonna add. What do I wanna add? Well, I wanna add the interest of each account. That's really the balance of each account. I'm gonna take account, my object, and I'm gonna link interest calc. Now interest calc doesn't take anything right, but we're using our methods inside here, okay? Once this function is done, I can return my total. That's my total investment. How much is everything combined? We're done. We're literally done. Polymorphism is done. Now we can just use our code. So outside here, let's say I say create objects, okay? Let's say I have a checking account. So let's tap into our checking account. Let's say I have a savings account, tapping into your class, and then investment. Okay, for each of these, it tells me I need an account number and the balance. So just make up an account number, one, two, three, four, five, a balance, how much do you have? Let's say 5,000 in a checking, uh, your savings account account number, how much do you have there? Let's say 15K, is that 50? That's 150. Well, okay, that's a good goal. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. And then let's say investment, which my savings should be in the investment. Uh, let's make that the account number. And then let's say here, integer form, let's say 20,000. There we go. So I have my three objects, one, two, three. I wanna give these three objects to this new total interest function. So what I could do here first is I could play around with this, okay? So I can add deposit and withdrawal if I want to. Let's say I get a paycheck and I can deposit into my checking account, let's say 2,000, right? And then my savings account, I would like to withdraw some money, 200. And then my investment account, um, I would like to withdraw as well. Let's withdraw 500 from the investment. Okay, so I'm using all of those. Now really the last phase of this, guys, is I'm gonna create a list. This does not have to be a list on the outside, it's just readability, okay? And inside here, I'm gonna give it all my accounts, my checking, your savings, investment. Now that we have that, I can say my total is equal to call your function, total interest, give it a list of accounts. On the outside, let's print off total, total interest of your accounts, run your code, and we're gonna see polymorphism. All right, so we have a super class account, but then we have all these other accounts, right? So what we can do is create a function giving it things that are unrelated, right? And that function can then call methods inside of our classes. That's pretty cool. That's the third pillar of OOP, but you're looking for my output. Let's check it out. And you can see here, my output is total interest for all accounts, $14,004. That's incredible. All right, that's a lot of interest. Now keep in mind, that's the interest I'm calculating. I'm not calculating the maximum value, it's just how much interest am I getting from all of my investments, all right? Well done. You can see that output here, all through our class-based polymorphic project. Whew, that was a fun one, guys. I hope you guys got value from today's video. If you guys got value, do me a favor, drop me a comment, let me know. Was this a hard concept to grasp? Is it more than some people make it out to be? You let me know in the comments, all right? And do me a favor and hit that like button if you got value and subscribe as I have weekly content, well, full length content and daily content out for you guys, all right? And remember guys, go check out my free 13 hour Python course. It's the link in the description or it's on YouTube, okay? Don't leave the platform if you don't want, okay? Head on over to the channel and check out that course that I have for you guys, all right? We're bursting through the pillars of object-oriented programming, and I'm glad that I get to be the one to break it down for you guys, okay? I'm stoked to have you here, and I can't wait to see you guys in next week's episode of Code with Josh, all right? Until then, use the resources I have available to you guys, all right? It's all over in the channel. It's the links in the description. Everything I have is in one place to help you go further on your learning journey. All right, till next week's episode of Code with Josh, I will see you then.